I talked with some of you earlier today and I had the idea of basically something like um, uh, a uh, like a lot of projects do uh, uh, co-generation for projects like uh, small for example and um, just having a template to kickstart your project can be sometimes super helpful um, so let's run that command I worked on it from dinner onwards so it's very it's very new um, but let's see how this goes so basic basically the idea is um, it will create a, a new repository and it will use um, a template that it, I'll show later on GitHub if I have time. Um, but basically you see that here it created the Python template. And then it bootstraps the project to uh, replace the files in place. Um, and then hopefully it's going to create. So here I should have probably started there, which is basically you specify three things. I use the any scale endpoint. Um, that we were provided with, and just like the input would be just this objective. So here it's just create code to download data, train a machine learning model based on Iris data set, and then uh, put an API in front of it to respond to post requests for the prediction from the model. So a very simple, uh, uh, very simple uh, case, right? Um, so yeah, let's see how this went. I think it just didn't update. This so I'll just reload. Yeah, it's hard with the mic. That's true. Um, so let's see. I think this one is stuck, but maybe if we look on um, on the repository. So this one is the actual repository, and then uh, it should have created right now a generated code and created a pull request with the code that we want. So this should have been pushed in the last minute, hopefully. Uh, yeah, so we see here uh, add generated code. So we see that here it created uh, two files, one to train, one to uh, predict. So something very easy. But then you get all the benefits of um, having all your code structure from like the Python template. So that means you get like for example this repo is kind of an opinionated way of structuring your project with pre-commit and uh, semantic release and um, like uh, the like GitHub workflows and stuff like this. So um, it's basically an enhanced way of setting up a, uh, a repo from a template. <laughs> Any question? So are you familiar with cookie cutter? Yes. So you would say this is like maybe like a natural extension of that? Like it's cutter, so yeah. Uh, cookie cutter. I haven't used it in a long time, but cookie cutter, if I remember correctly, is based on like only your code structure. So it would like generate like your SRC folder or something along these lines. Um, so here it's a little bit like this, but I can actually show you uh, the Python template. So this comes from this repo. So it has. I don't know if you're familiar with a few of these things, but uh, like usually this way it's like a, an open unaided way as well. Um, as I put it, I don't know why it's so like this, but um, you can see that like usually you want to have like your code semantically released with like semantic com like uh, commit lint. Um, you want to have um, like your pre-commit checks, which for example uh, uh, like lint your code. So you see here it uses uh, Flake and iSort and like all the things that Python would use. So it's kind of a cookie cutter, but it's also all the setup that you would have for like a, a language-based project. So here, it's like all the best practices that you would have for writing Python code. You put it in a template on GitHub, and then you bootstrap your project from that. So it's not only related to your code, but actually yeah, like your, your lean test build, um, as opposed to cookie cutter. Which files is the agent aware of when it's writing, when it's adding code to the postcard? So it, it, right now, because it's uh, like I just like spent a couple hours on it, it, it just like it looks at the the core folder. So if we go back to the the other repo, um, it's only gonna create the files like the only files it modifies here. And you see, like for example, here uh, lint fails, but the only files it modifies are gonna be within that uh, the same name as the repo, uh, 
replace minus with underscores, uh, and 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 that's it. So right now it's only focused on like the decoding of the SRC folder basically, and all the other files are going to be generated and kind of standard and like make your GitHub workflows and um, your release rc.json and all the stuff that you need to to like release, lint, test your code. Uh, so ideally, I think the next step or would be to also include like tests in a, like a test folder or something like this. And, but it's like it's only gonna write files in like the equivalent of like the SRC folder and the test folder. But is it is it aware of other files? Like do other files get passed in the context? Um, right now, no. But that would be great. Oh, okay.